Hey, readers, welcome to another day of poetry. We are still working on some similar ideas and building off of our previous learning to eventually start developing some stronger ideas about the poetry we are reading. So just to kind of review with you, our learning intention right now is to discover poetry elements in poems and in prose. We talked in the past about the difference between the two and some of the similarities. Prose would be more like the narrative reading that we do. And we know that some of the elements of prose, like setting, uh, theme, mood has been a big one we're talking about, right? Those things all also transfer into poetry. So yesterday we used images and we did look at a poem to help try to find the mood of that image or poem. So it is a tricky craft move and it can be a little bit difficult. So we're gonna spend a little bit more time trying to push ourselves into developing some deeper thoughts about the mood. So today I want to teach you that we it's very important to notice the mood when you're reading poetry. And we're gonna talk about some strategies for finding mood by paying attention to the setting, word choice, and the feelings the poem creates. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a poem and then you'll have an opportunity on your assignment today to go ahead and try this with your own example, your own poem. So take a look at what we have here. This poem is called Dust of Snow by Robert Frost. So I'm going to model for you and show you how you can use the strategies we've discussed and thinking to eventually analyze a poem just like this. So I'm going to first do just a read through to get to know this poem. So The Dust of Snow by Robert Frost. <clears throat> the way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rude. So now that I've kind of read through it, I have done, I'm gonna do some close reading here a little bit. And I kind of have an idea of just what the poem is about. So the way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. I'm gonna start off by thinking about the setting to kind of try and figure out the mood that this author is trying to create. So as I'm thinking about this poem, I sense that it's outside. I see that it's talking about snow. So I'm imagining it's probably a little bit cold. And then it says, has given my heart a change of mood and save some part of a day I had rude. So I'm like, okay, it's snowing, it's cold. I'm imagining outside, I see a crow, so I'm picturing birds flying around. And I'm thinking about, well, what kind of mood does winter create for people? Sometimes people say that winter is kind of sad because it's gloomy and dark. And some people like the magic and wonder of the trees. So I'm gonna have to start looking at the words now to try and figure out what, you know, trying to picture this author's trying to create what kind of mood. So it says, the way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. All right, I'm looking at the word specifically and I'm thinking probably what you're thinking too. What is a hemlock tree? So I actually went and looked up what a hemlock tree is and it's kind of like a pine tree, right? So very big with the little needles on it, almost like a Christmas tree. So <clears throat> now that I'm thinking and it's helping me create this picture better, I'm picturing like someone at home, maybe looking outside their window and seeing this crow, right? But then I think, oh wait, no, shook down on me, the dust of snow. Ah, this person's outside. Okay, so they're outside in the winter time and there's a crow in like a pine tree that shook snow down on them, okay. I'm picturing that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and keep reading. Has given my heart a change of mood. So this character has one feeling at the beginning and another at the end and saved some part of a day I had rude. So once again, I'm like, all right, I'm getting to a point where I'm creating a picture and I'm stopping because 
I don't know what rude mean. That's a challenging word. I'm going to look that up because it's going to help me understand the poem. So when I look up the meaning of rude, it's talking about regretting something or bitterly regretting. So something that maybe you did or allowed to happen that you wish didn't happen or, you know, so when I think of that, I think, Hmm, this person was probably dreading the day they were about to have, or maybe something happened that day that they were unhappy about. But then it says a change of mood and saved some part of the day. So now I'm getting a better idea of this mood. Now that I've thought about the setting and I've thought about the feelings that come along with that setting. And I'm also noticing that this author is actually trying to get us like two different moods. So at the beginning, it's setting up what I imagine is like a dark winter day, gloomy, cold, maybe brisk, right? But towards the end, the character has a change of heart and they're seeing the beauty in what the winter can provide. So it starts off as gloomy and ends a little bit more warm, a little bit more promising. So notice some of those vocabulary words I'm using. This poem begins a little bit gloomy, picturing a cold winter day and someone walking outside with cold snow hitting their body. But it ends with a little bit of promise because when this happens, the character has a change of heart about their day and starts feeling a little bit better because they're realizing some of the beauties that come along with winter. Wow. That is a lot from a little poem. Notice how long it took me to get there though. I reread it and reviewed it for the mood, for vocabulary and for the setting. So I read it a few times. When you are trying to figure out words to describe mood, here are some examples of things you can use. Now on this chart, we have examples of tone and mood. And you'll notice that picture lets you know the difference between the two. So the tone is kind of how the author is presenting it, the attitude that they're presenting it. So thinking at the words, the tone helps create the mood. So you might see words like the words underneath our tone category in the poems you read, and you need to use those words to determine a mood. So this will be posted in Canvas for you to review as needed as well. But here's what I want you to do today. Below this video is an example of another poem by Ogden Nash, and it's called The Hippopotamus. It's a shorter one, just like the one we just read. I want you to read this and work again today to try to find the mood and identify some key words that helped you understand the, the mood. Then you are going to compare our ideas for the mood of Ogden Nash's hippopotamus with frost and compare and contrast the two. <clears throat> all right, there's no right or wrong here. It's all about sharing your opinion and using evidence to support it. You'll also find that you have a challenge task below if you're interested in trying out some more poetry. Happy reading. You should definitely have this video closed out by now. If you still have it running, were you even paying attention? Do you need to rewatch it? <laughs>